Hi folks, this is Mike, uh, Mike's Messier. Subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Mike's instant movie review. A little less than instant this time. I saw Grease uh, last night and it was one of these $5 reprises. Uh, if you haven't noticed, if you've uh, not gone to the movie theater in a while, sometimes they're re-releasing -re some of these great movies from the past. So for all of those of you that say things like, oh, there's no good movies anymore. They don't make good movies anymore. Well, assholes, there's plenty of fucking old movies in the theaters now on the big screen. Support the goddamn cinema because I know what's gonna happen if this trend continues, if everyone just Netflix and chills into oblivion, then people are gonna say, oh, I wish they had movie theaters, uh, like when I was a child. Well, you're the assholes that are not supporting the movie theaters by going to the actual goddamn movies and supporting them and keeping the theaters in business like I am. So let me give this fucking review here. First of all, this movie has some uh, real unwoke moments. Now, I've known this, I've been through this before with Grease. I saw a stage production a couple of years ago, several years ago, and I had to walk out because it was so disgusting to see this rhetoric by these children, this young theater company that was doing this profane material. But Grease, it's really an interesting movie. I, I mean, th if this movie was remade today, which I'm sure will be eventually, because the movies don't have any good ideas anymore. They just keep making remakes. Well, they'd have to fucking censor this thing. They'd have to water it down because uh, there's so many things. Uh, first off, you see in the opening segments, the, the fucking Thunderbolts or the T-Bolts are on the fucking sports stadium steps. And they look over and one of their little potsies, one of their little friends is like lying down on his side, looking up the skirts of his female classmates. So that's your introduction to this guy. So, I mean, it's like, you know, that would be a fucking suspension and a fucking hashtag at this point. The opening song, I have to give credit. The opening, I mean, first off, you start with the fucking beach sequence. It's a nice beach sequence. Olivia Newton-John, beautiful woman. Uh, she's there with John Travolta. Funny, I just looked on IMDb for some of these ages because when watching this movie last night, I'm like, man, everybody in this fucking thing looks like they're 30, and pretty much they were in their 30s. You know, uh, Travolta was actually pretty young uh, for the cast. He was more like in his mid 20s, uh, but still, um, just very, you know, old cast to be playing teenager Stockard Channing. Uh, she did a great job as Rizzo, but she stands out. She looks like, you know, uh, not a teenager. Let's put it that way. She was 33 when this thing was filmed. She's supposed to be playing a 17 or an 18 year old high school senior. Uh, interesting. I mean, just kind of an interesting thing that I don't know if anyone else calls out Greece on that, but I mean, I, or, or maybe just look beyond it. But I mean, they did seem to cast between 22 year olds to 35 for all the teenagers, which was interesting. Uh, and then you've got like the principal lady and the fucking sports coach, Sid Caesar. He's pretty good. Uh, I guess they were in their early sixties. So it's just kind of an interesting thing. Uh, moving forth. And I know that's a established Hollywood practice of casting older actors to play teenagers because they're more reliable and, and they look better and they're more seasoned a little bit and so forth. So it's not a federal crime. It's just fucking interesting to me. The opening song, I have to give apologies to Barry Gibb because for years I thought that was Frankie Valli singing the opening theme song to Grease. But in fact, it's not. It's... Uh, it's not only, not, not only than uh, Barry Gibb. So Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees is singing. Some, somebody's walking by as I'm doing my fucking thing here. Uh, but I, I like the... Uh, all these people have to come walking by when I'm doing my Mike's Instant Movie Review. I mean, it's, there's no sense of privacy anymore. Uh, it's these women are coming out of their yoga class. And uh, they're all going to their vehicles. To, to get their fucking coffee or whatever the fuck. They're all going to go celebrate their exercise class by eating a donut somewhere. So uh, anyway, um, Barry Gibb, what a great song to, to start the movie. Grease is the word. Uh, just great opening sequences. The, the animation I really like in that opening sequence. It's very uh, 
contemporary for the time, 1978, but I thought whoever did the uh, animation was really awesome. Um, I just don't like all these people coming around me. Uh, what else? Uh, what else was... Okay, so there's almost like a date rape or like a, a fucking molester thing in this movie when they have like the big dance-off National Bandstand, which is a clear uh, rip-off of American Bandstand. The host guy, who's probably, you know, supposed to be in his 30s or 40s, he's like flirting, you know, and she's flirting with him too. Uh, the, the Marty Masha Sherry, like a cherry character, she's flirting with this guy. And uh, then later on, you know, she says that he's, she saw him putting an aspirin in her Coke. So it's like, whoa, what the fuck? You know, I didn't realize all these things fucking serious things, you know, the fucking drugging an underage girl for sex was in this movie, uh, then you had things like, uh, fucking Rizzo gets pregnant by, uh, Kravecki. I forgot all about that storyline, it's like, and, and to be honest, it's kind of, um, I think it's a cheap device, like, oh, she gets pregnant, and then 20 minutes later, I'm not pregnant, uh, so I just, I don't know, it's an interesting movie, because it goes by kind of fast at first and then i think for me it after grease lightning it kind of like it gets to be too much it's like too much singing and dancing and bullshit um i like it for i like the movie but i don't like the movie if that makes any sense i mostly like it it's mostly a nostalgia thing but also it's a nostalgia on top of nostalgia see this movie was made in 19 released in 1978 i don't know when it was filmed I, uh, based on the musical, I don't remember or know when the musical was first performed on stage, but it takes place seemingly like in the 1950s. Now, there's no uh, politics in this movie. There's no topic of, of segregation or racism or all the realities that people are going through. The Cold War, none of that stuff is mentioned. And it's pretty much uh, mostly 99% uh, Caucasian uh, cast. I mean, you wouldn't make a movie like that these days. You need some uh, casting diversity, okay, some representation for Christ's sakes. Uh, but in this movie, it's all whites. It's just a very white movie, Caucasian movie. Uh, doesn't mean that people can't enjoy it, but I mean, the guy from Shaw Na Na in the band is uh, one of the few people. There's another person just smiling at me. So, uh, I'm getting a little sick of this. Uh, so basically, just just a lot of uh, things in this movie that you wouldn't make today. I mean, it seems like every guy in this movie is a potential date rapist. I mean, even the John Travolta character, he and Sandy D are at the fucking drive-in, and he fucking gives her his ring, and then she takes it, and then she's like, oh, now I know you respect me. And then Travolta just kind of has this, you know, Danny, whatever the fuck, has this look on his face, like, oh, I shouldn't have given her the ring. And then he tries to, like, make out with her and you know, basically forces her down on the car seat. And this is the fucking protagonist, you know what I mean? So it's just interesting uh, the way things were, I guess, or the way things were perceived. Because um, there is, a, and there's a thing on the dance floor where one of the guys, like, they're having a the big dance-off, and that kind of uh, call-me girl, the girl that says call me, the guy lifts up her skirt to expose her underwear. A lot of things in this movie are pretty, like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Uh, disrespectful, risque, whatever. I mean, I think that the most obvious, or basically the whole, uh, you know, pregnancy storyline was, was, you know, fucking Rizzo is basically deemed a slut. Uh, was, Kaneki says something about making her an honest woman. Travolta's character says something about not wanting sloppy seconds. You know, all these things, uh, I mean, I'm not sitting there all offended. I'm just kind of surprised that this shit was made. Maybe, maybe I'm enjoying it in some perverse way. Just because knowing how our society is so cancel culture friendly these days, um, it's nice to see some fucking filth got through the mainstream once in a while. And still does, because they still do these things. I mean, I know that in the song, uh, what's you call it, Grease Lightning, uh, it's the Grease Lightning vehicle is referred to a pussy wagon. It's referred to as a pussy wagon, okay? So, what else? Olivia Newton-John, I mean, another thing with Sandy D. You know, she has like this whole introspective moment at the fucking car race 
where she decides, you know, that she can no longer be herself. She must do something drastic to change herself in order to be accepted by, by Danny or whatever the fuck. So basically she goes and whores herself out. She puts on these tight leather pants. I mean, she looks very sexy, the big hair, but it's like, that's the fucking conclusion that a woman's supposed to make is, Oh, if being the good girl is, is a horrible thing. Being the virginal princess is a horrible thing. The way to attract men is to be a whore, you know? So it's like, okay, good lesson, I guess. I mean, what the fuck? The other thing about this movie that I don't know if other people bitch and moan about, but I will. Uh, Krenecki, the Jeff Conaway character, the, and Jeff went on to be on Taxi for many years. The, I'm very confused at the relationship of the Thunderbolts, the T-Bolts, so the Danny Zuko gang. So basically you have John Travolta as Danny and fucking Jeff Conaway as, as uh, Konecki in the same fucking gang and they they look very similar they both wear leather jackets and they have the slick back hair and then basically the rest of the gang consists of the three stooges you have the, and these guys they basically do a three stooges routine early in the film so to me i'm watching this and i'm thinking what kind of gang is this like you have a gang where there's like two alpha males two two cool guys who look like they're kind of brothers or cousins or something travolta the slightly better looking cousin but the other guy is okay and then you have the three fucking stooges. And it's just, it's weird to me. It's like a weird setup. It's like you got, you know, two Ric Flairs and uh, three Ole Andersons or something. It, it makes very little sense. I mean, it's just bizarre. Um, some of these uh, yoga people. It's just odd to me. You know what I mean? Just, just an odd situation. And uh, so, you know. I just, just think it's weird. So that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be right. I'm probably right. I usually am. Hold on. People walking by. People have to go to their cars to do their thing. So there you have it, folks. That's my uh, review of, of Greece and... Uh, Person's getting very close to my vehicle. I just, I don't know. I just, let me think. Is there anything else? So basically, the whole Kronicki versus Danny thing confuses me uh, quite a bit. Why do we have two, like, kind of leaders of this gang? They have this weird thing where. Kronecki's going to the car race and he asked Travolta to be like his lieutenant and then they hug and then they feel weird about hugging. It's just, oh, there's another moment in this movie that would be hashtagged into oblivion now. They're about to do the fucking dance party thing, the national bandstand, and Sid Caesar reads the rules and like rule one, <laughs> rule one is all couples must be a boy and a girl. And then before there's any other reaction, somebody yells out, uh, sorry, Eugene. And they push Eugene, who's like the school nerd. So the implication is that not only is Eugene the school nerd, he's also a homosexual who would like to be dancing with a, a boy. I mean, I guess that's the joke. I don't know. Um, I didn't write this goddamn thing. But I mean, now you could not do that whole fucking setup. That would be hashtagged into oblivion. That would be uh, whatever the fuck, you know, offensive to the LGBTQ IRS asterisk uh, community. And we'd all be offended. We'd all be upset. And so, um, you know, it is what it fucking is. But I just thought it was interesting that all this shit, the abortion storyline, the fucking, the fucking pilling or, or fucking attempted rape of a fucking minor uh, the, the, um, the, the, the gay bashing or the fucking lack of, uh, lack of inclusion for the boy, boy or girl, girl potential dance teams, all that stuff to me, um, just makes this movie, uh, chop full of fun, chop full of interest, chop full of intrigue, definitely a different era or era. And so there you fucking have it, folks. I mean, there was nothing really else for me to say, <clears throat> Some of the songs I remember liking more than I like them now. Like, for instance, uh, the big one for that would be um, 
uh, what do you call it? The Grease Lightning itself. Like, I remember liking the song more than I did when I saw it last night. And also, Starker Channing has kind of this weird song towards the end where she gets all introspective about her life as a slut, which was kind of boring. Um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's a good, I mean, first of all, I gotta say, Livia Newton John, what a beautiful woman. She was 30 years old at the time, flawless skin, and just a very attractive lady. And uh, now she's deceased. So it's just a painful reminder, folks, that enjoy your goddamn youth while you have it. Try to fuck as many people as possible while you still can. Because one day we'll all be in the fucking ground. And that's the goddamn truth. Okay, folks, subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Buy all my goddamn books. Go to MikeMessier.com. Scroll down and you'll see all the links to my books on Amazon. Disregard the Vampire Mike Messier document documentary and everything else. Subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.